Okay, um, just to make sure that we are stay in time, um, we will start our next talk. Um, I would like to introduce Dimitri Slyarov from Elcomsoft, one of our Russian friends, as we said. There's, a, I think, a long-term relationship, bet uh, relationship between Elcomsoft and ERNW. And um, we talked in 2010 at another conference about um, our exhibition. It was almost, almost an exhibition. Um, about some stuff that Dimitri told me um, related to digital photo cameras. And I said, okay, that sounds really interesting for our Troopers conference because as Anna told in his keynote, there are um, other devices that uh, might be affected by some kind of IT security um, impacts. And I think this talk is a very excellent example um, that other devices that are running some kind of embedded system software have security problems too. So, um, Dimitri, let's start and um, show us what you can do with Canon digital cameras. Thank you, Michael. Uh, my name is Dmitry Sklarov. I'm uh, employed as information security, security analyst at Elcomsoft, uh, Moscow-based uh, information security company. And uh, I will present you a speech uh, about forging Canon original decision data. Uh, first of all, uh, what's, uh, what's all this about? Uh, former photo cameras use uh, some optics, some film to store image, and it was not too easy to manipulate with images. You need to spend a lot of time to change something uh, on print. And uh, modern technology use digital images and uh, it's very easy to make editing of them and produce almost any result you like. Doesn't matter what actually was shot. Uh, there is uh, kind of uh, hoax published on the internet, uh, this right picture, uh, about a uh, shark attacking helicopter. Uh, it was uh, hawk uh, about this picture that is uh, one of ten uh, best photographers uh, under the version of National Geographic Journal. Actually, it was just composition of two images uh, took uh, from different photographers uh, from different places, from some guy who photographed uh, a lot of sharks and from some military photographer. Both of these images are available on the internet so you could uh, find original one and uh, see that they're almost identical to result if you merge both of them. And in year 2002, Canon, one of the leaders of uh, photography uh, and digital photography, announced that a uh, system for verifying originality of images. Uh, so that system was designed to provide you assurance that image was not manipulated after it was uh, taken. And uh, that complex uh, consists of uh, Canon 1DS camera, a very expensive camera from Canon, and uh, some verification device. In year 2005, in December, uh, I bought my first uh, digital single lens reflex camera from Canon, Canon EOS uh, 350. And uh, actually, I was very happy with that camera. It's a very good piece of hardware. It's very useful and I like it very much. Almost at the same time, I discovered that uh, my camera doesn't support image authentication feature because my camera is not too expensive to, for, for that feature. Uh, but two years later, I discovered that uh, I upgraded my camera to EOS 30D, a camera of a little bit more high level technology uh, and uh, I was happy when I found that uh, there is some menu items that manipulates uh, enabling or disabling original decision data embedding in image. And uh, from that point I was able to start my research. I am security research, I like photography, I just merged this to my, my, my hobbies together and start working. Uh, almost every modern digital single lens uh, reflex camera from Canon supports original decision data. All cameras produced from year 2007 support it. Older, not all uh, modern, all, every, every uh, DSLR camera. 
to start my research, I just made several images from my camera using original decision data enabled and disabled, and just compare them. Condition was very close, and I discovered that it's actually only two big difference between enabled and disabled original decision data. Uh, probably you know that uh, JPEG file uh, is a tagged file, so you need to start read it from the very beginning, read first tag, uh, find how much data inside it, and uh, process that data, then pass to next tag, and so on. And after last tag, there is information, uh, there's image start tag, and all image data stored inside it. Here is a general, general, generalized picture of uh, image and I find that inside exif data, exif data is metadata stored within uh, in JPEG file by uh, almost any modern camera. Inside exif data, there is some tag uh, with information called uh, uh, offset of original decision data. And it uh, contains a value that offset from beginning of the file to the actual record of original decision data, which stored after main image. Original decision data from my camera always was 160 bytes, and I start analyzing it. I made several photos, uh, compared several dumps, and discovered that uh, several parts of uh, original decision data are always the same. They are marked in green. I, I decided that uh, first word is just marker. It's nothing uh, meaningful in, in, in inside it. Uh, next, there is version of uh, original decision data, version number two. Uh, number of regions uh, that covered by original decision data, uh, four regional descriptors, region number, offset of uh, data within file, and length of uh, the region. But all other bytes are, looks like random one, and uh, there is no easy way to find what's inside it. If you see at uh, ranges, uh, they cover almost whole file, except exif orientation tag. So if you use camera in this position or in that position, data could be written the same, but uh, camera remember which position was uh, during you making a shot. Exif offset tag that already was mentioned earlier, and uh, original uh, decision data. Uh, all other file is covered with sum of region. Region null, zero is uh, main image, the, the picture, and uh, three other regions covered all information from start of file before main image, uh, just in excluding uh, two areas that not covered with uh, original decision data. So here is a generalized uh, structure and notation of original decision data. You could see there are two unknown values. One of them is at beginning of original decision data, and second one is related to region. So there are four of that uh, records. And uh, I was trying to guess what that data could be used for and what kind of information that holds. About first uh, unknown value, probably they're related to the whole image, while that information related to specific region. What kind of information could be there? 20 bytes. What kind of function product produce a result of 20 bytes? SHA1, SHA1 right. It's very commonly used function, but uh, it's kind of authentication, so it could not be just output of SHA, because it's no authentication inside it. What kind of function do you know based on hash function that provide authentication? HMAC. So uh, there was my guess. That first one is uh, first uh, unknown value related with the whole file, all other with the records. Uh, we use SHA based function that HMAC. It's most uh, common ideas. No, actually, it's 
more experience than guessing, because it's, it's normally for industry to use such, such approaches. But uh, having only images, uh, there was no way to get deeper. So you need to start exploration of camera itself. I'm not a specialist in hardware manipulation. I like this, this device, but I'm not sure that I'm able to hack it with oscilloscope or something like that. But I'll try to do something with my camera. What's the problem of hacking firmware? Uh, I'm working on Windows. I'm, I, I believe I'm professional in uh, reverse engineering Windows software, and not only Windows, but uh, software from operating system, not from some hardware device. From an operating system, you could run debugger. debugger. You have a lot of tools. Uh, you could uh, make uh, a lot of researches with instrumentation you already available for you, that already available for you. But uh, with camera, you, I don't know how to attach debug, debugger. Probably there is some way available for Canon uh, engineers, but not for me. But uh, fortunately, Canon is a uh, famous company, company and produce a lot of cameras, and many people who use that cameras much more professional in hardware and uh, they organized some community uh, called uh, CHDK, Canon Hackers Developers Kit. Uh, it's available on the internet, you could visit their site uh, and uh, find a lot of information about Canon cameras. Actually, they're mostly oriented on uh, pocket cameras, not on uh, mirror cameras. Uh, but uh, a lot of information you could find there, helpful for digital single lens reflex camera too, and I use that information. First thing you need to do is get dump of uh, firmware. You need to get information from the camera. I don't know how they get this approach, but uh, one of the best, best ideas I've seen, and it's really implemented, using LED indicator on camera to dump content of the camera. They wrote the code. I don't know how they find the way to run it code by, they find it. And they run, run the code, and the code just blink every bit of content of your firmware. And they receive that information, convert it to just binary data, and get full dump of, of memory. And it's great. I found that uh, they, the dump uh, for one of cameras on the internet uh, and start working with it. Actually, it's almost impossible to do reverse engineering without uh, either disassembler and uh, I need to mention it because I like it very much too. So almost all of my, uh, not almost, all of my uh, ideas uh, becomes uh, correct one uh, after reverse engineering of firmware. And uh, actually both uh, records that were unknown are just HMAX from some data under some keys. Here is uh, how HMAX from region calculated. Uh, we produce uh, region data bytes with MD5 uh, hash function, obtain some 16 bytes result, uh, repeat it four times, and use uh, HMAC as HA1 function to obtain HMAC for the region. Almost the same is for whole image, but we, good, uh, we get uh, four region hashes from previous step merge them together, get again 34 bytes, and run the same HMAC function to obtain file HMAC. But there is still some HMAC key. HMAC key is secret element, so all authentication is based on secrecy of that part of the schema. Uh, I was able to extract that key from my camera. That key built inside camera from two obfuscated parts, obfuscated by different ways. In different cameras, ways of obfuscation are closed, but still different from camera to camera, from model to model. Uh, two parts merge together, and last 32 bits of resulting key replace it with body ID. Body, body ID of camera is kind of unique identifier that uh, unique for every camera produced by Canon. 
So uh, what we have finally knew about uh, HMAC uh, function and about uh, original decision data version 2 by implemented by Canon. Uh, all cameras of the same model use the same key. So if you have ability to forge signature from one camera of 30D, any other camera could be forged too. Different camera models use different keys. So you need to have key for each model, and after that you will be able to find, to, to forge, to sign uh, images for any camera. The main problem for, for Canon and for customers of that technologies is that key could be extracted from the camera. It's the biggest problem and it's uh, make all technology useless. Later, I asked one of my friends who owned it, uh, EOS 40D to make several shots with uh, original decision data enabled and discovered that Canon modified the system. Original decision version becomes number three. Uh, it contains much more information. It's uh, more complicated, not, not much more, but it's uh, more complicated. And uh, I'll start working with it too. Uh, generally, uh, all image divided in several parts for JPEG file. Uh, again, main image, uh, user comments is another part, check marks is, so, I, I don't know what exactly, some Canon software call it check marks. So I call it the same way. Uh, probably it contains some information about flash, about mode flash used uh, during making a, a shot. Uh, image thumbnail is uh, another region, and uh, all other bytes uh, except errors uh, excluded from, from checking, uh, all other bytes are covered by region number two. Original decision data itself is excluded from uh, checking because it's, it can't uh, check itself. Generally, original decision, uh, uh, and another, another idea, original decision data now inside EXIF, so it's not attached to end of the file, it's uh, embedded inside EXIF data. Generally, original decision data version three contains from header, and from information part. Uh, header contains uh, maker version, uh, image file signature, and original decisional data info signature. So signature from the rest of original decision data. And information part describes what actually signed, what actually authenticated. Here is uh, header structure. Maker the same all once. Uh, version number three, uh, now image signature is variable in length, but in all images from all cameras I see in, in, in the wild, it's always 20 bytes, so probably the same HMAC. In another signature for information part, the same always 20 bytes. Here is a uh, structure of error descriptor. Each area have uh, ID, uh, one basic, one, two, three, four. Each area use some salt value. Salt value always four bytes. Uh, it could be different in length, but uh, all values i seen always four bytes. It holds signature of variable length, and again, it's always 20 bytes uh, on, on real images. And uh, range described by uh, area described by set of ranges uh, for all regions except range, uh, for all areas except uh, range two, there is only one uh, range uh, inside area. Area two consists from seven different ranges, but it's just a way to represent areas that covered by hash. And here is uh, the whole information part. Uh, again, uh, there is some salt value 
again, four bytes in length, uh, whole length of file is checked too. And here is uh, some additional fields that uh, was not uh, present in the uh, first version in, in, in any way. I will talk about them a little bit later. And uh, here is uh, hash version present. <coughs> Originally, Canon used VxWorks operating system for the cameras, uh, and uh, at that operating system, hashing uh, algorithms uh, was represented by this approach. All data hash, hashed again with MD5 function. Then salt value from header was processed by some pseudo-random number generated and produced two strings of uh, 16 and 32 bytes. It's funny that salt length, as I said earlier, only four bytes. So they just used some slow code to make many bytes from only 32 bits of entropy. So they was unable to improve that number of entropy, uh, and I don't know why they took such approach. For me, it's stupid. Uh, and after that, uh, hash merged with two random values separately, again processed with MD5 hash function, and uh, obtained result of uh, 32 bytes. And uh, that bytes was processed with a chmark to get final signature value stored in original decision data. Uh, going from uh, VxWorks to new operating system DryOS that use it in all modern uh, cameras from Canon, they use just SHA 2056 uh, to produce uh, result, and SALT is not used anymore. It's still generated, it's still stored in original decision data, but it doesn't use it. Several notes on salt values. Uh, inside camera, they obtained from weak invertible pseudorandom number generated, generator, and that generator is seeded by value named shutter count. It's number of uh, times that mirror in camera fall down and up again. So actually, it uh, shows lifetime of uh, your shutter, how long you could use it before it's, uh, how long it's already used. So if you buy a camera from some guy and uh, you need to check how long it was used, uh, you could use uh, original decision data uh, and invert uh, values uh, from CELT uh, in, in, that stored inside original decision data and find how long that camera actually was used, how many shots was made from it. Canon doesn't provide official way to get this information. So you can just look inside camera. For Nikon cameras, for example, there is a special value in EXIF that stores that uh, cut, uh, sh shutter count. For Canon, you could use original decision data to find it. And uh, several words about obtaining HMAC key. Uh, you remember that three members of uh, structure, key ID, board ID, and key salt. Actually, first two of them never use it inside camera. They just copy it to original decision data. But there is some another value exists uh, that called key board ID. It's, I believe, I'm almost sure, that it could be obtained from key ID and board ID by some unknown function, function unknown to me. It's uh, obviously known to Canon. But keyboard ID is stored without, within the camera. It's unique for each camera, even if cameras of the same model. And uh, it's somehow based on only these two values. Uh, because uh, when image is verified, only key ID and board ID is passed to verification device and uh, no keyboard ID is uh, used from, from software. But in hardware where verification happens, uh, key ID and board ID somehow allows you to obtain keyboard ID. And keyboard ID merged with salt value, 
this is value is four bytes. Uh, it's generated by the same uh, pseudo random neighbor number generator, uh, and it's just to make different pictures from the same camera signed by different key. So camera new keyboard ID, camera generates some random salt value and uh, merge it with body ID that could be obtained from salt. It's uh, kind of unique value, as I said earlier. And uh, that uh, re resulting value processed with some function based on SHA1 is uh, not, not very complex. Uh, that just use uh, 160 bits function to obtain 256-bit result. And uh, finally, we got HMAC key for specific image. And that key is used for only, only for one image. Here is uh, some notes about values uh, of board ID, keyboard ID, and key ID. Key ID is lies in range from one to nine. I believe that uh, in hardware device that use it to verifi verify uh, originality of the images, there are just nine keys and uh, key ID is referred to one of them. Board ID is uh, like body ID. It's just some 32 bits value. And uh, if you knew the function or knew the triplet key ID, board ID and keyboard ID. You could just sign any image from any camera because verification software from Canon never tries to make any match uh, ca of camera model, uh, key ID, board ID. So you could just say that my camera use board ID and key ID one and one. And uh, if you knew keyboard ID for that values, you could sign images from any camera using that key. And again, uh, keyboard ID could be extracted from camera. So if you extract them, you could sign any image from any camera using dry OS operating system successfully. Several words about verification device. Uh, first of them was introduced uh, in companion with EOS 1DS camera, looks like this, and uh, supports only one camera, and now it's discontinued. Uh, successor was uh, DVK E2, introduced in 2004, uh, support all camera based on uh, dry OS, or, uh, use it uh, original decision data version two, like uh, Canon EOS 30D. And now it discontinued too. The, the most uh, modern device uh, introduced in 2007, here it is. It's a very small piece of hardware. Actually, it's a uh, kind of smart card uh, in form factor of SD card with uh, more electric contacts on it and specialized reader from some company named uh, Japan Aviation Electronics Industry Limited. So Canon ordered a uh, card reader from aviation company. And uh, it supports all modern cameras uh, and old, old cameras too. And also it supports uh, advanced encryption of images uh, that are available in top level cameras from uh, Canon um, 1D, uh, Mark III and Mark IV. This uh, device cost about uh, $700. Uh, to, be to be honest, uh, we at Elcomsoft uh, buy it cheaper for $500. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's, it, it, I, I believe it's expensive. And here is a summary about uh, camera models that are using uh, original decision data, data version 2. Uh, lines marked in red that uh, cameras not available for me. Uh, it's all 1D cameras that cost from $5,000. And uh, I find no person who was, who have idea to give it, that camera to me to make experiment on it. Uh, but uh, lines marketing green, uh, I, I have chance to 
get this camera in my hands and successfully extracted uh, HMA key from it uh, so I could uh, forge images for that camera. Uh, here is summary of cameras produced after year 2007 uh, and uh, implements uh, original decision data version 3. Again, uh, cameras marked in red uh, not available for me. Uh, I never, uh, oh, sorry, in previous slide, uh, lies, uh, white lines uh, doesn't support original decision data at all. So that camera could not protect images with authentication. Uh, here, uh, red lines uh, camera not available for me. Actually, I never get not only cameras, but even uh, shots made from that cameras with original decision data turned on. Usually, it's turned off. Uh, lines marked by green, uh, I have dump from that cameras, and I was able to extract uh, keyboard ID board ID and key ID from uh, the camera, and now I could use that values to sign images. And uh, lines marked in green, uh, in, in yellow, I have uh, either images from that camera and could see which value used there, or I have access to update firmware for that cameras and extract uh, key ID, uh, extract a hash value from, from uh, hash version from uh, update. And uh, here is small summary about uh, what technology from camera really represents to people who intended to use it. Uh, Application for this technology is police force, insurance company, and anything where image is significant. So not just picture of some man, uh, but some evidences. But if, you, we, if we can dump camera's memory, we can. We can modify firmware and run our code on camera's processor, we can. We can extract secret key. We can calculate original decision version 2 for cameras that we have keys, 30D, uh, 20D, and 5D. And uh, we can calculate original decision data version 3 for any version 3 camera using any triplet of uh, key ID, board ID, and keyboard ID. We can't generate original decision data for 1D cameras version two with original decision data version 2 uh, because we don't have a keys. If we will have camera, we will have chance to extract the key and again generate signature. Uh, and for now, I don't know how to calculate a keyboard ID from randomly chosen uh, key ID and board ID. It's inside smart card. Probably I will have some time to experiment with smart card uh, and trying to discover that function. I'm almost sure that it's based on SHA-1 algorithms because that algorithm is implemented inside, cam inside that smart card. Uh, and uh, that's almost all that we can't do. What, on my opinion, Canon could try to do with this technology. With existing cameras, there is no way to make them reliable for provide authentication of images. It could be forged for sure. So they should say that there is no way to use that camera for authentication of images. Probably in future version of cameras, we will see some cryptographic controllers that don't expose the key uh, from one source that not official one, so I could not rely on it. Uh, I get information that uh, modern cameras already have such chip, but uh, just doesn't use it at full power. So they use it as cryptographic accelerator to calculate hash function much faster but doesn't use uh, its ability to secure, calculate uh, HMAC. But uh, anyway, 
to actually protect this technology, they should avoid running arbitrary code in cameras. For any of existing cameras, it's still not prevented. So you could modify firmware, upload it in camera. There is a great project called uh, Magic Lantern. Lantern exists. Uh, they start from Canon uh, 5D, I believe, and they just developed a way to extend functionality of Canon cameras. You need once modify Canon firmware, and after that you create a special boot sector on your compact flash card, and add your code as a binary file after exact bin, and uh, turn on your camera, and additional software starts and works and helps you to do some things that uh, not available in basic firmware from Canon. Until Canon prevent running not Canon code, uh, it's almost impossible to make this technology become secure. And I believe that Canon should hire some people who really understand security to avoid uh, stupid mistakes on making such, such verification system. And uh, we reported to Canon at September 21, half a year ago, we still have no response from Canon. We still have no official words from Canon that they consider that probably there is some problem. They just don't answer to us. We report to CERT, so they knew the problem. But uh, the main sign, the main manifest from this research that nobody should trust results of uh, verification process. Any image from any Canon camera could be forged. So signature is not reliable. Here is the end of presentation and uh, now I could try to show you how it works. Here is software from Canon that allows you to verify your images. Uh, to run it, you need to have, to run verification process, you need to have hardware. So, oh, it's too early, actually. First, I need to make a picture. So, just nobody wants to avoid picturing. Okay, now I just connect camera to computer. Here is our image. Too slow. Oh, here it is. And now I just show you how it could be verified. I run Canon software, opens folder, select image, push verif verify button, process started, and here is, you could see, green mark. It means that uh, image considered to be good one, not modified. I use hexadecimal editor. Modify just date in exif.
open this picture again, verified it, and you could see that image is broken. No good. Now I just run graphical editor. Hmm? It's very hard for me because, because I'm not a graphical man. <laughs> and I don't have his photos <laughs> with me. I just add some text to image. I'm saving it with other name. Trying to verify it. And here is yellow sign, that means that uh, image actually doesn't contain information for verification. I use graphical editor, which is not aware of verification at all, so it's just removed all information about signatures, so there is nothing to verify. And now I use my own program. to produce signed image. and verify it. It's okay. <laughs> That's all. So if you have any questions, I will try to answer. Is, is the, the board ID and the other ID stored in the metadata of the image or is it uh, or is that kept secret in the camera? Uh, oh, there were, there were two values, a, a board ID and then... Uh, the actually, bo board ID stored somewhere inside camera. I don't okay. know exactly where it is. Body ID is uh, copied for any image. So uh, any image uh, contains body ID of camera. Board ID for modern camera, not for mine, but for newer, newer one, uh, is, is, again, it's somewhere inside camera. And if you made shot with uh, original decision data turned on, that value is copied inside original decision data. But it's not using to calculate key. Key calculation performed inside hardware unit verification. But calculated key in obfuscated form stored inside each camera. So I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, the other camera vendors, do they have similar technology? Uh, actually, i trying to find who have such technology and uh, discover that Nikon have, and they produce uh, verification software, uh, it's software-based verification, and uh, cameras that support the technology are only expensive one, uh, starting from, uh, one and a half thousand dollars, uh, no cheap cameras support it. And another company who formerly have uh, such technology was Epson. Epson have 
four camera models that support image authentication. It was seven years ago, and uh, I believe there is no way to find neither such cameras nor software. Uh, and, and then the second follow-up question is, uh, are you aware of any uh, prosecutions that have been based solely on photos uh, using this type of technology? Uh, I believe that uh, solely on uh, photos, no prosecution could uh, be performed, so uh, photos is additional. But the uh, idea of using photos is not only in courts. Uh, insurance company based uh, all their records on photos. So if you have car accident and uh, insurance guy come to you and make photos of your, your car, uh, I, I don't think that they use the technology at all, but they could and uh, they should not use it. Like maybe watermarking to say, I took this photo so I should get the royalties for it might be another application. Uh, actually, uh, this is not... Uh, I never heard about using it for holding ownership for the photos. There is a much easier way to, to use it. Just publish a little piece of your li little sized image on your website and it's, it's already yours. Okay, Julia, wait. Hey, um, I was just wondering how you extracted the keys from the camera. Uh, for 30D, for example, I reversed firmware. I find where actually key process that it's never stored in uh, in in uh, un deobfuscated form uh, in flash. So it's only in RAM in in, su in such way in in uh, random accessible memory. So I just modified firmware and uh, at point where original decision data should be written to file, I just changed one address and instead of uh, name of one register, and instead of uh, original decision data, key was written to file. And for newer camera, if you have full dump of camera, you could uh, use only disassembler to find all algorithms and you could just they obfuscated manually, and that was did for, for four cameras I have uh, marked with green. Um, do you know how many bits are in the hardware key? Excuse me? Uh, no, the hardware key that's stored in the, um, in the hardware or in the, in the camera? No, no, no. Hardware key... Uh, that's not extractable? Key, one, one version of key stored here in camera right. in obfuscated form. So. Uh, I believe it's somewhere here too, but it's smart card. It's very hard to crack. Right. It's very hard to extract key from it, but I could extract it from camera. Mm -hmm. And what, what's the question? Uh, I was, how many bits uh, are the, uh, the For newest cam newer camera, it's, uh, 100, it's uh, 256 bits. And for old cameras, uh, for this one, it's two part of uh, one to eight, so two, five, six again, but last 32 bits are uh, just uh, dropped out and replace it with body ID. So it's strong, but it's improperly held. Right. Okay, uh, looks like it's an interesting topic. Uh, more questions? This, this is the third version of verification device, so it works for all models from very beginning. For version one, two, and three. But actually, uh, to build verification, you need uh, SHA-1 function, because even no MD5 calculations uh, involved uh, performed inside this device, only SHA-1. And uh, you need to have keys uh, from that camera, from 5D camera, and you need algorithms of uh, getting uh, keyboard ID from board ID and key ID. If you have that things, uh, I, I could just develop such card by myself. It's, it's not a big problem. But keys inside it, and it's very hard to extract. Okay, if there are no more questions, um, Dimitri, thank you so much. Um,
thank you very much for your attention and thanks for Troopers, for ERNU and W and for Michael personally for inviting me to this conference. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will have a one hour lunch break now and continue about um, 1.30 with the next track.